Thank you. So my name is Alberto Broggi. I'm coming from um, Italy. I'm working with VisLab, uh, which is a company, uh, actually it was a startup, uh, which was acquired by Ambarella three years ago. And we've been working with them for three years in stealth mode. And now we're, we're you know, announcing what we, what we are doing exactly. So um, maybe not everybody knows that um, in three weeks we'll be celebrating our 20th anniversary of our first uh, self-driving test uh, that we did uh, in 1998 uh, in Italy. Um, we've been traveling with the, with the, with the car for 2,000 kilometers in Italy. Um, in six weeks, uh, and that was done 20 years ago. Um, that was uh, the very first uh, test uh, that, we, that we did in my laboratory. Uh, I put one picture just to show you some vintage pictures that I, I like. That, well, that, was our, um, that was our car. Uh, we were using an, an RV monitor as a, as a, as a way to, for the car to let the user know what the car was seeing. We were using two video phone cameras, um, very low cost, to detect uh, vehicles and, and lane markings. Um, and you can see you, we were using some very strange motor, stepping motor, uh, connected to the, to the steering wheel. That was the, that was the equipment that we had 20 years ago. Um, but I would like to show you uh, what the vehicle was able to see 20 years ago. Uh, so in that case, you can see a video that shows uh, um, lane markings detection and vehicle detection, so object, object detection. That was done um, with stereo vision. I, I mentioned we have, we've been using two cameras, so we were using stereo vision uh, to detect the 3D world. Um, and that was the kind of field rouge that we started 20 years ago and we've been going on until right now. Um, so stereo vision have been improving a lot. So in this case, it's again, 20 years old video. Um, but we improved uh, during all the tests that we did. So in this case, it's the DARPA Grand Challenge on the, one on the right hand side and the Urban Challenge on the left hand side. So we've been working on stereo vision and improving that. So you can see that we, we have a denser way of detecting uh, objects. Um, then when we had our intercontinental test, uh, when we drove from Parma, Italy, to Shanghai, China, that was 2010, um, we had an even better way of understanding the environment. And you can see, for example, we have two um, videos here that show how we were able to detect uh, objects, uh, but not only objects, uh, also uh, the terrain. So we were able to understand how the terrain goes. Uh, then uh, I would like to show you another milestone of my laboratory in 2013 when we drove in downtown Parma. Actually, that was actually really driverless. Um, and we were using, at that time, our FPGA-based system. So we have a um, camera, stereo camera, that was doing, uh, doing the, you know, the processing using F an FPGA at video rate, so 30 frames per second VGA resolution. And it was pretty dense uh, uh, 3D reconstruction. That was the past. So we've been going on and, and improving and improving the stereo vision. Now we have something better. So now um, this is the car that we just uh, announced uh, at CES uh, this year, so a few months ago. And we put on this car our latest technology, the, the technology that we've been uh, developing in the last uh, three years. Um, so we've been improving on the uh, resolution side. So we're now working on 4K images. That means uh, eight megapixel images. Uh, just to let you understand what we're talking about, um, since the projector is not 4K, I've been increasing a little bit the resolution of that portion. So you can see that we, can, we are able to detect uh, and see very, very clearly vehicles that are quite far away. And that in that case, that vehicle was about 20, uh, 200 meters uh, far away. So we're processing this kind of Im images. So very, um, very high resolution. And then we're doing stereo on that. So I will show you what we do with stereo vision 
on, on 4K images. So that's the original image. That's the stereo vision. So we, we have one, for, for every single point, for every single pixel, we have a distance estimation. So uh, we're talking about 4K images. So we're talking about eight megapixel. So if you think about that, more or less 50% of the image is full uh, with, the, with distance estimation. We have four million 3D points uh, in this image. Uh, again, as you mentioned, as I mentioned before, so let's try to enlarge the portion just to understand how, how clear uh, we have the vision of the objects. So you can see that, for example, we can detect the person which is here and it's clearly visible with different, different color coding. Um, and if you enlarge that again, uh, you will see how, oops, sorry, you will see how many pixels we have to detect a person which is uh, roughly 60 meters away. So it's a huge number of points, not just a few points, but you can even detect the shape of the object. Uh, one of the most difficult problems when you use stereo vision is to keep the system calibrated. And we have been designing a, a algorithm that is able to calibrate the uh, stereo pair on the fly. So you will see in this movie that um, we can change the position of the two of the uh, cameras, in this case is one, uh, one camera is changing the position and the orientation, but still you, sta you, you can detect the objects. And the, what we can do in our system is that we do the calibration at every frame. So every frame at 30 frames per second, at every frame we do the calibration. So you're able to detect 3D objects uh, even if you have a miscalibration of the hardware system. Um, just to have an idea about the problems that you might uh, have, um, well, there's a bias illumination, but you will see that, for example, if you're using, st if you're using the um, uh, vision, the main problems usually are um, calibration, you already mentioned, high resolution, but in this case, even sunlight in front of the camera. So the sun, which is uh, exactly shining in front of the camera, into the camera, and these clips show you that uh, this is a really bad situation when the sun is actually flashing into the camera. And you see that uh, it's, the system is able to keep the same visibility of the area around the sun, even if the sun is flashing into the camera. So that's um, one of the most important issues because uh, when I'm talking about uh, mm, computer vision, people always tell me that there are problems with bed lightning, and, uh, which is, for example, night driving, and, uh, and the sun shining in front of you. And this is the case to show you that um, with, with the cameras that we are using, we have a good visibility even when the sun is flashing into you. And we were seeing something that with the previous presentation regarding night. Um, uh, well, this is uh, night driving. Um, as you can see on the top, we have uh, driving in the night in a fairly lit environment, which is good. I mean, we have visibility there. On the bottom, we have it pitch black. So it's completely black, so completely uh, dark. But as soon as you get a little lightning, uh, we have we've been taking these images with our uh, back camera. Uh, just to avoid uh, having our headlights into the scene. But with a little lightning, you can detect uh, and the vision starts working pretty nicely. So just to show you that the main issues with uh, low light uh, and sun in front of you and calibration, well, seems to be mm, pretty, I, I don't want to say they are solved, but uh, we are going in the right direction. Now I would like to so show you something regarding the uh, processing that we're doing. Uh, I will keep the most important thing for the end. Uh, but now processing with this, our stereo vision, uh, you will see um, a, in this case, is stereo detection. So we're trying to understand whether, whether there's an object in front of you. Uh, and there's an uh, inset here, which is an uh, enlargement of the portion of the image here. But again, because we are using 4K images, so the resolution is so high that you cannot really appreciate if you look at this image here. So you'll see that uh, with these green bars, uh, we detect objects, so 3D structures that are in front of you. Um, and you can see that we're pretty, we can detect objects which are quite far away. Uh, we go up to 150 meters uh, with the 3D reconstruction um, with 4K images. 
So you can detect structures like, for example, those vehicles uh, up to 150 meters. And we're talking about those little vehicles down there. And this is 3D reconstruction done 30 frames per second. Um, just to show you something more that is running on our system. Uh, so we do also CNN classification, again on uh, um, 4K images. Uh, just have a look at the um, results here. So a blue bounding box is over, uh, well, detects um, uh, pedestrians and yellow bounding boxes are for cars. Again, the same thing. So we are enlarging the portion here. Um, so again, what you will see now again, uh, pedestrians which are quite far away are detected fairly nicely. And we're talking about distances which are beyond 180 meters. Again, thanks to this very high resolution of uh, our, our images. Um, now, I will, again, I, will, I kept the most important things for the end because we're talking about the engine that we're using to do this uh, processing. So we're not using GPUs, we're not using PCs, you know, very uh, power consuming things. We're using a chip that we designed and we just unveiled uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, it's a com completely custom solution, so it's a custom chip that is doing this uh, 3D reconstruction, um, 4K images, CNNs, uh, everything runs on this chip. We call it CV1, um, which stands for Computer Vision 1. And it's again able to do stereo vision at 30 frames per second, 4K images, so 8 megapixels. Um, and it has a very low power budget, so it's only needing four watts. So that's the most um, different thing from other, other solutions that are out there. And the other most important thing is that the IDSP is on board. So we are tightly connected with the sensor, so the imager, and we can drive the imager. So we can um, send commands to the imager, we can configure the, com the imager, so in order to get the best out of that. And we put those um, chips into a camera we designed. Um, we put four um, cameras, uh, you will see here on this car. Uh, we put four cameras, one in the front, one in the back, and two on the sides. And this is a short range system. So it's able to detect anything which is uh, from f zero to five meters from the car. So it's only five meters around, so the short range. And then we put um, other cameras on top. So it's six cameras on top just to cover 360 around. So you'll see three cameras here, and then there are three cameras on the other side. So with all these six cameras on the top and the four on the side, on the bottom, we are able to detect anything from zero to 150 meters away in 3D. And I will show you what I mean. Uh, so this is a um, computer graphics that shows our car and the images taken from the front from the left, uh, the back, and the, and the right uh, uh, short range system. So in this case, there are just, uh, um, you can see it, 360, four images, four stereo images. Then we have the cameras on top, six cameras on top. Uh, these take six images. Uh, and again, if you stitch them together, you have 360 coverage. But uh, in this case, again, as, as mentioned, this is computer graphics, but this is the real thing. So this is the 3D point cloud that we generate thanks to six images on top of the car. Again, each single image is a 4K image. So in this case, you can see it's a pretty dense uh, reconstruction of all around the car. So from the very close proximity, so zero to five meters with a short range, and from five meters to 150 meters. Uh, and and uh, you will see that, for example, we can detect uh, even the small uh, step of the pavement here and for example even very far away objects like that car uh, can be detected in 3D. That car is 150 meters away and you have a number of pixels for that car not just a few echoes but just a number of pixels. That's the result of the object detection running on that point cloud. Just to have an idea that point cloud uh, uh, is made of six uh, stereo cameras on top four cameras on the bottom, uh, and the number of 3D points that we can get is 200 millions per second. S and everything, again, is running just uh, on this chip. So we have no other uh, GPU or, or a high-level processor. 
just to summarize, uh, uh, I just mentioned uh, the, the most important thing of, of this presentation, I think, is the availability of this chip. So we now have the chip, which is into our cameras. It's able to process 4K um, cameras, 4K images in stereo mode, so stereo processing, plus all the CNNs. Uh, and they can run all together in the same chip. Um, and has a very low power budget, it's only four watts. And we just presented the second version of this chip. So the first version was presented in, in January at CES. A couple of, uh, well, actually one month ago, we presented the second version, which is CV2. Uh, CV2 is roughly 20 times more powerful than CV1 uh, with respect to CNN, so the processing of neural, neural networks. It's uh, automotive grade, so it's already AC uh, CQ100, and uh, has a video compression on board, so you can even uh, stream the video that you get from that. And the same power budget, so still four watts. Thank you so much. Uh, how much? <laughs> <laughs> Very low cost. Very, very low cost. Yeah. So, what's the output from the chips? Well, the out actually, the chip is programmable, uh, and the output is coming of, out of um, uh, Ethernet. So, you have, for example, presence of objects, uh, lane markings, uh, um, 3D reconstruction if you want, uh, or, for example, if you just want uh, uh, classification, you get bounding boxes. I, I noticed the trees were cut off. I mean, so if the, if there was a heavy tree canopy on the street, are you capable of seeing? Yeah, we actually, we are. Uh, we have uh, cut that for that video clip. Okay. Yeah, but just to have you understand. Is, is it capable of detecting of what might be not seen because of the tree canopy? Um, or is that your next area of research? No, actually, I mean, in that case, uh, we were cutting everything because we were trees on top, so the, the, the video would have been looked bad because we've been flying the camera on okay, top. So I do understand my question. If the tree canopy is blocking vision... Okay, I mean, you, you see that as, a, as, a, as an obstacle, of course. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. So it doesn't, there's no way you can see through the tree canopy? No. No, if it's, blo if it's blocking, uh, of course, uh, it's an object. John, we, we have to have LiDAR versus camera here. Let's go, John, come on. It's necessary. We saw a pretty good presentation of uh, uh, stereo vision used by Super, I think, in Matt's presentation for emergency braking. Can you speak a little bit as to which automakers are, are most advanced in using stereo vision? Well, actually, uh, I, I cannot mention the automakers we are working with. Uh, but uh, that I can tell you there's a pretty large interest uh, in this stereo, very high resolution stereo auto calibrating. Yeah. Subarus was internally developed, no? Yeah, no, I, we're not working with, the, with the, any car company. We're doing that on our sales and then talking to car company. How much data are you generating in like every hour from that array? Um, we generate about four and um, five terabytes per hour. Uh, but actually generating and stay inside the camera. So um, if you really want to record everything, it's five terabytes per hour. But everything stays inside the camera, so you only get, out, out of the camera, you get just uh, bounding boxes or 3D reconstruction. Yeah. One more. Is cooling an issue with your chip? No, it's four watts. Four watts is, is nothing.